Well, I have my scanner, have information, also have voltmeter with me. I'm super dangerous right now. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm still gonna continue troubleshoot this truck why it doesn't start. As you saw, I have my voltmeter and I also have all of this information off of the AC Delco website and this is exactly the thing that's gonna help me to try trace the problem. And the more I'm working with this LC Delco website, more I'm falling in love with it. So as you guys remember, whoever remembers who watched the previous video episode, I should say, I had some of this DTCs, U numbers, U10, U010C, U010E, U29D, U29E, zero before all of that. And also U0283, which is, uh, I believe this is the fuel pump uh, control module. And the reason I love this website is because it explains how to do diagnosis and all that. And also, it says circuit system verification. Verify that none of these codes actually present before you continue any further. Uh, I'm just telling this as of my words, it doesn't say that here. But if any of those DCC are set, you're supposed to refer to diagnostic trouble codes. But if none of those sets, refer to circuit system testing. That's exactly where, what I'm going to be doing right now. Man, it's cold. Um, first thing, we need to figure it out, this U code, the U010C. So, and tells me all of this information to follow. To be honest, I only wrote through the two pages <laughs> and then I'll, I stopped because I will have to go through each, each individual uh, thing to figure it out where the uh, can, Canvas connection is lost. Can, can, Canvas? Uh, anyway, as I showed you guys previous list, uh, can you see like this? Uh, first thing, what I where I wanted to start uh, engine module, which uh, I can check if there's a 120 ohms, and then the first thing where I wanted to start is turbocharger uh, actuator, and that is actually under the hood, and that's the first thing I'm going to start, and I will go with that. Uh, through this with you guys to show you how I diagnose and hopefully with this information is gonna be fairly easy and hopefully I'll be able to trace it down and maybe start in this episode hoping finger crossed you never know this is freaking electrical first the uh, troubleshoot is to pull this plug out and I also have a diagram for this plug it's somewhere over here let me find it. This is this plug right here. So by pulling this plug out, I know in which wire is which and what I need to check. So it says here, ignition vehicle off, all accessories doors closed and the keys for uh, at least 10 feet away from it. Then test for the uh, uh, for less than 10 ohms between ground circuit, terminal five and ground. If we're looking at the plug like so, the number one is on the right, number six on the left, I mean second from the left. Those things are too thick, so I'm going to be using some wires. My meter sets at 200 ohms. Putting this inside there, I should be able to check and see if I have a 10 ohms or less. It's gotta be less than 10 ohms in order to, for the system to check out. That's what I understand. Let's see ground we have 0 0.6 0 0.5 ohms 0 0.4 0 0.5 so we are good there if uh, 10 ohms are greater so we skip this part if if less than 10 ohms ignition on vehicle and service mode verify that the test lamp eliminates between the ignition circuit terminal 6 and the ground that's where my test lamp comes handy i'm gonna go turn on the vehicle okay ignition is on let's see if the light will work so like so number six is the last one and let's find the ground i believe ground should be on the turbo 
there we go it's working so far two tests passed and um, we skip all this information if it doesn't eliminate if the test lamp eliminates ignition vehicle off uh, all the doors close and keys 10 feet away okay i have to wait until the vehicle shuts off completely you can hear the noise because the vehicle haven't shut itself completely it says it can take up to 10 minutes so that's it vehicle is shuts off so now we need to test test for less than two ohms in each of the powertrain high-speed uh, GM LAN uh, serial data circuit and stu M3 turbocharger vein so now I believe that's where I need to disconnect this plug and so I believe this this is the one gonna go end to end I also have my cheat sheet here as well so this one there engine chassis harness and blah 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 so it says high speed g lane 7 plus 7 minus oh, okay so 7 plus 7 minus on those two so this is the 7 minus all of them let's check all the 7 minuses i need my cheat wire again so the fir uh, first two and first uh, uh, middle two are actually First two white ones, it's minuses. Got that. And let's find pin two, uh, pin two white. So I can't tell which white that is, so I need to find the pin two. So if I'm looking directly like so, it's gotta be second from the top. I got this one here and second from the top. Huh, I got nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, let's try another one. 33 on top, 34 second. There we go, it's working. So, it's also 0 0.5. That's good, that means we have a line. It works. Let's check the second one. And now, since I already checked that one, I remember which one that is. Also 0.5 ohms. 7 plus is 33, which is the top one. We have also 0.5. Let's check uh, one more. And I also believe it's gonna be top one on this side. Number one, number one, yep. It's good right there. That means loom is not broken. Let's connect this back. And let's continue reading. So it actually says that I need to plug this back. Like so. And test ohms through each one here and each one here and it's gotta be in between uh, 110 and 120, uh, 130 no less no more so if we remember if I remember I should say correctly number one and number two are seven plus seven minus so right now we should have haha that's where the problem is that's where the freaking problem is okay nothing there and nothing here absolutely nothing there to verify if my multimeter works and rest of the stuff works i uh, i wanted to do a different test okay we plug this in we unplug this let's see if we have uh, ohms at all and what i'm going to do is plug seven minus and i also going to plug skip one seven plus and technically we should have 120 ohms coming from ecu exactly i do have 120 ohms in one connection let's see if another connection also have 120 ohms there we go is it can be that simple i kind of don't believe so but you guys saw me testing it so 120 ohms comes from the e ecm to the turbo connector but it doesn't come from the turbo connector to the actual plug so that right now it makes me think that turbo actuator is actually bad or something wrong with the connector it can't be that simple but the good thing is i have another truck that i can steal the turbo actuator i just don't know how hard is it gonna be but only one way to find out is to replace it fix it and see if 
anything changes. I think since English is my second language, I kind of got this wrong. Um, I've been thinking about it and I think, how the hell is gonna show 120 ohms if I unplug the plug and there is no communication with the ECM. So I believe right now I need to go to the passenger side to the reduction control module and check from there because if you think about it 120 ohms is actually inside the pump uh, module and inside the ECM so there's gonna be connection in between so I think I got that wrong so I'm sorry guys let's go on this side and check this as well okay so oh man it's all wet two three middle and also six seven so in between them supposed to be anywhere from 110 to 120 oh 130 let's get those wires going okay uh, my precious information don't fly away gotcha middle plus minus plus minus first one plus and minus 120 ohms also 120 ohms so that means turbo actuator is actually working let's go to the next step what's the next step i don't understand this yeah <clears throat> either my english is way too bad or i don't understand something let me read through this million times and see if i can get that so like i said it was my mistake if you read right here if the test lamp illuminates uh, you're supposed to close the doors and the keys gotta be 10 feet away but test for less than two ohms on each powertrain high speed gm lane series data circuit end to end between uh, m103 turbocharger vein and the device that says DTC. If I look at the map from turbo uh, for turbo actuator, it goes to that module. And as you can see, I already ran the wire, speaker wire, because I don't have anything else long enough to test. And I actually already tested. So one seven plus and seven minus have zero in them actually zero nothing not even 0.5 but two other ones have one half 2.1 actually 2.5 and another one have 2.0 let me show you what i'm talking about and we'll go from there both of these wires comes from the uh, seven plus both of them connected to seven plus so i get this one first 7 plus is actually what color is it blue yes it is blue with something and they are next to each other right here let's uh, see turn this on so right now it's connected make sure this is not touching and we're pointing here you can see it's it's nothing it doesn't do anything zero absolutely anything but and it doesn't do anything here as well so nothing no communication or something zero absolutely nothing but if i'm switching to this one and trying the same thing can you see 2.3 2.2 2.1 2.0 and it doesn't go any uh, 1.9 I don't know what that means same thing with the ground and I honestly don't know what it means uh, what, what I have to look for and it says here so if it's two or greater I need to repair the open open high resistance I don't know how to fix that <laughs> and I don't even know if I'm doing proper testings I guess I will continue digging and I will update you guys as I go as you guys can see it's a new day i'm still continuing digging around trying to figure it out the issue let me show you what i did yesterday yesterday i diagnosed the turbo actuator everything is checked out i also checked the reduction control module everything checked out then i went to this plug right here which is on the driver's side will well 
everything checked out from here to there and from here to what is uh, this is the NUX sensor I believe or oxygen sensor then to the NUX sensor or oxygen I don't remember which one but everything checked out signal goes to there and coming back and same as the fuel pump module so the system is actually working it took me quite a while figured it out how it works and how the system communicates also I found the information on YouTube if I have some issue between pin 6 and 14 it's gotta be 120 if there's an issue with the communication or with the system but I'm showing 60 ohms which is engine control module and the fuel pump control module actually communicating and there's no breakages in between them by researching doing watching a lot of videos how people diagnose those chevys with a uh, high speed cam bus today i decided to leave that alone and to start knocking down why it doesn't start and the reason it doesn't start because crankshaft position sensor it's not communicating with the ECM or it's not or it's broken or something else so I got myself uh, seven sheets of how to troubleshoot P0335 which is crankshaft position sensor circuit I also got myself uh, plugging information which uh, wire comes where and what wire does what so I got myself voltmeter I'm going to test it and see if that sensor is bad or there's even uh, power coming through or not and I know the biggest thing is this sensor give me, giving me a problem not to be able to start the truck because without without this sensor truck will not start so like I said I will leave this uh, communication alone I want to figure it out this sensor and see what causes this sensor not to communicating with the ECM. So this is the sensor that I'm uh, connector that I'm looking for. You also can see that I open up the casing because you can see it was smacked. I open up, check the every single wire, make sure there's no breakages. Same thing over here, no broken wires. So right now I want to open this plug up and see if I get any voltage coming through or not hold on what <laughs> really really guys if i think that's what it is it cannot be more simpler than this how could it i don't understand how i did overlook this check it out i was planning to unplug this plug and I happened to saw some things like the broken wires and not the broken wire I saw this uh, little niche in and I'm like what's that you can see I found the freaking broken wire that's what causes the truck not oh man all this freaking time <laughs> let's open the wire and see if that's the issue or not man really if that's the if that's it <sighs> let's just try and fix it man I don't believe this is gonna be this simple and how did I miss this part I don't understand I check this I check that make sure there's no broken wires and I freaking miss this part how the heck did I did this I just don't understand so much time spent researching <laughs> just to fix the couple of wires and be able to start the truck this is unbelievable i can't i can't believe this look at that one two three four wires really val you're that dumb huh freaking a i'm pissed at myself right now just freaking pissed at myself how did i miss this i don't even understand i'm pissed and at the same time i'm happy because i found the problem
that's it. All the wires repaired. Now it's time to go and see if I'll be able to start this truck. Can't wait. First, let's clear those codes, rescan and see how many of them are going to come back. After cleaning and rereading information, it looks like crankshaft position sensor issue disappeared. Now it looks like I should be able to start the truck. Finger crossed that is the case. I've been telling that so many times already and been disappointed so many times as well. Time to see if my problems are over. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got the first start. Of course, it died right away, but you heard it. Let's cycle key again. Make sure glow plug works. Maybe, maybe not. Again. <laughs> Who freaking said that my track will not start? Oh, it's died. <laughs> Let's cycle the key again, and let's try it again. <laughs> Who freaking said that my truck won't start, huh? But for some reason, RPM's kind of high. No? Everything normalized it. <laughs> Who freaking said that, huh? Yes, baby, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I did it. I freaking did it. I told you so. This thing works. This thing works. 30 hours in, baby. That's a beautiful life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful life. And it's time to fix the frame. Time to call my buddy and see if he's gonna be able to let me borrow his frame. Fix the freaking frame and put the whole thing together. And just like that, guys, there we have it. It's <laughs> it's awesome feeling when you're working on the problem for so long. Mo mostly not working on the problem, but doing research, reading a lot of information. It goes in your head so much and you worry that you're not gonna be able to remember all of it but at the end of the day when you win a battle that's freaking awesome feeling and also gives you another chance or I should say it gives you another way to figure it out or troubleshoot the problems so as you saw I should have just went through the wiring because the garbage truck plowed like so and a couple wires were pinched so I should have went through the wiring better than I did and I would have found the problem right away instead of being having problems tracing and my frame would have been done by now now my friend is actually sitting on the frame he set the vehicle there I don't know when he's gonna be done with it but hey that's how it is. We're just gonna keep moving forward and knocking one issue at a time. So what I wanted to do right now is to put everything back. As you can see, I pulled out the ECM because I thought that's where the problem is. I need to hook up this uh, hose here, uh, put the air box back, uh, disassemble some of this stuff so I can clean it, wash it, and before the frame, everything is gonna be done under the hood then what's what's left basically is to fix the frame program the some other stuff and that's it buff it paint the front bumper install everything oh i still need to buy wiring for the rear rear end uh, for the rear parking sensors but other than that man we're moving right along so let's move to the next task and see how far we can get. While I was installing the ECM, by the way, it's back in place, I got a call from my buddy and he told me his frame machine is gonna be available today after lunch. So, right now I'm gonna bleed the brakes and finish, finish everything here, button up, so I can drive this truck on the trailer and today this truck will be on the frame machine and hopefully even today i'm going to be able to straighten frame kind of doubt because it's gonna take me a couple hours to set the vehicle on uh, frame uh, straight 
uh, hang the gauges, take the wheels off and prepare everything. But I am hoping that I will be done. If not, I still have another day tomorrow. So that's a really nice news. Let's just button everything up and let's go to his shop. Little bit of oil so they can slide in easily. I was fighting with them I don't want to fight and with the help of lubrication everything goes in smoothly nice nice another one boom nice this one in and one more to go come on baby don't fight there we have it. Okay, done right here. Time to install the box. So, as you can see, the truck on the trailer, that means only one thing. I bled the brakes, topped it off coolant, and topped it off, actually, uh, filled in power steering. And I'm actually getting late. I was thinking I'm going to be there before lunch, but it's already one o'clock. And I can't work on the frame tomorrow, so that means I will have to finish it today. And honestly, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do so. Actually, maybe I will, maybe I don't, but let's not waste the time, let's go there. It's about an hour to get there, plus about an hour to set the truck on the frame and everything and probably three to four hours to fix the frame so yeah big shout out to my friend ivan he's <laughs> he's the true friend of mine taught me how to work on frames taught me a lot of stuff how to work on cars and saving my day again so let's go and fix it yes i made it to my friend's shop and as you can see the truck sits on the frame rack already and ready to be set up in order for me to fix this frame, I need to set up the truck on those blocks and make sure all of those blocks, uh, the blocks are gonna be sitting right here. They have to be the same height, same thing on the front. I'm still debating where I wanted to put them because I have a bracket right here and also tank. I kinda don't wanna drop the tank off. Am I might gonna have to, but I honestly don't really want it to do that. We'll see, let's uh, start setting everything up and see how everything goes, how everything turns out. Maybe I don't even have to. It only gives me six inches. It's five inches actually. Actually, this side I don't have to bring it down. Only the other side. Got the truck chained up. Now, what I wanted to do is put the chain around here if I can fit it through and pull it down so my cap can sit on all four mounts and then next step is will be shown what i need to do not exactly sure what i need to do because there's a lot of things and i'll figure it out
unfortunately guys i wasn't recording any of what i did guys i wanna get off the frame ivan needs the frame so i just wanna get off the, his hair i'm gonna show you that everything looks legit before i'll get this truck turn around and uh, finish with the rear end as you guys remember the driver side front half of it was higher than the passenger side and rear actually was higher than the driver side so now you see those gauges if you look through those gauges everything looks really good so first two awesome right uh, i don't know if it'll focus or not no it's not gonna focus so throughout all of them looks straight like so so there's no tilting and also i just finished pulling the banana it was banana as well so this one and rear one was lining up and two middle was lining up but i pulled the front already this way so all of those three you can see those three pins lining up but the rear uh, rear one the fourth one you can't see it and i can't uh, make the camera focus on that one i don't know how to make it but it's not focusing so you can see those three lining up and since he have three towers on the front and there's no towers on the back i will have to put this truck on the wolf turn it around bring it back put it on the blocks again chain it and pull the rear end uh, I believe if I need to pull right now I need to pull towards the passenger side it's still gonna be towards the passenger side but it's good the passenger side gonna be on this side so unfortunately that's how it is and also it's loud and uh, so I just didn't record so I'm sorry but you saw straight level and also straight on the pins except the rear end let's turn it around and finish the job and let's go home so i flipped the truck in order to finish with the rear end i'm super tired i wanted to go home but i need to finish it i don't want to come over here tomorrow and finish it so let's suck it up and continue let's finish it bring it home and continue working on it home same exact procedure installing on the blocks installing those gauges pulling frame that way now while holding front end that uh while holding front end that way as well and while holding this this way so it doesn't bend from there that is a task now i can put you guys back on the tripod since i'm working alone So you can see there is a chain on the front, also a chain on the three quarter and now I'm going to be pulling rear end towards passenger side. So what I wanted to do is I want all those four pins line up. When they line up the frame is done. But I also wanted to over pull so when I release frame comes back. We also want it to over pull so when we release it back and that's what we're looking for I don't know the camera doesn't want to focus but you can see it's a straight straight line as you guys know rule of thumb always leave shop clean after yourself now let's put the truck on the trailer and let's go home super tired 